Oh, what up, YouTube? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to mix and edit an acoustic track like the one I have right in front of me. If you haven't seen this, uh, the video of me creating this actual track and you want to see how I go by recording an acoustic guitar, feel free to check it out. I will post a link right beside my head. Uh, and if you'd like to watch that, go ahead. But if you're just here to see me edit this acoustic track, you are in the right place. Yeah, you are. All right, so let's begin. Let's listen actually first to this acoustic track just to see how it sounds um, before I go by editing anything, all right? So it's a very nice, smooth, tone and sound even before I go into mixing this. So this only means one thing and that is that I don't want to do too much um, maybe in the EQ process to this track. So let's open up that EQ because I've stressed in many of my videos that you always want to do EQ and then you want to do compression and then you want to have all kinds of fun with whatever else plugins after that. So EQ and then compression. So let's start with this EQ. Generally, I do a low cut on these kind of acoustic guitar tracks. Um, I, I'd, I'd say around between 50 and 100. This could greatly depend on where you're putting this acoustic track. If you're creating a song, a very, very large song with other guitars, other drums, things like this, you might want to increase this low cut to get rid, rid of more of that low end, which you really won't be able to tell in a full band song. But if you're just doing acoustic and vocals, say, I would say keep this low cut um, maybe even below 50 because you do need some of that low end, that little, a little bit of oomph when you're actually doing just vocals and acoustic guitar. But for the point of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it around 55 hertz. That's perfectly fine. And then I'm going to also add a high cut because there are some very annoying high frequencies in that acoustic guitar. And I'm not going to low cut it too much. Uh, it's really unneeded, but for what it's worth, there it is. And what I'm going to do is actually um, try to find a certain frequency that I really, really don't like, and then I'm just going to kill that frequency just a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase one of the bands as uh, to the highest decibel range that you could possibly can, and then I'm going to make the actual slope of it very, very high I guess so 5.3 and then what I'm going to do is play this track and move this band back and forth to find that frequency that I do not like so let's do that right now so I, I really don't like that frequency around 305 um, you could definitely uh, mess around with in between 200 and 500 Hertz um, and you can definitely go in and do this for yourself I'm going to do that or decrease it negative 4.5 decibels and increase or decrease the slope, sorry, um, to a reasonable value of 1.5. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this case I'm going to find a frequency that I really, really like so that I can boost that um, part. So let's do the exact same thing. That's too high. All right, that sounds good, and that's at 1500 hertz. All right, so I'm going to take that to positive 4.5 and decrease that slope to again 1.5. That's that's decent. That's very decent. All right, so we didn't really do too much to the EQ of the track besides a low cut and boosting and decreasing a couple frequencies that I like and do not like. Um, so let's move on to the next, which is like I said, that compressor. All right, so this is an acoustic guitar track, which means that the gain reduction that you want should be around two point or two to four decibels, which, depending on the dynamics of that track, could be higher or lower. And since this track, uh, by looking at this waveform, seems to be fairly decent, I'm going to just shoot for around negative three decibels of gain reduction on this. And I can do that by editing this compressor threshold. But since I'm aiming for neg or three decibels of gain reduction, I'm going to add three decibels of gain makeup. 
to this gain portion of this compressor. And a fairly high release is uh, pretty standard. Um, and I'd say a lower attack is fine. And then I'm going to keep that ratio very, very low. And that knee mid to high is perfectly fine. All right, so let's edit this compressor threshold to get a gain reduction of around negative three decibels. All right, the average of that was about three. So we'll go with that. That's about negative 26 decibels on that threshold. All right, so now that we're done with the compressor, we can have fun with the, some plugins. And by plugins, I mean plugin, one plugin, and that's going to be my reverb. And Space Designer does it for me every single time. I love this plugin. If you haven't seen my tutorial over how to use this plugin and what it's all about, I would highly suggest going and watching that. I will again post the link to that video by the side of my head if you want to check that out really quickly. Um, but yeah, let's just go in and s just find a decent uh, length of reverb that will add a very nice natural sound to this acoustic. And I find that a medium, uh, a medium space is about fine. And I like I like the more of the halls or rooms on an acoustic. But you can definitely mess around in plates and springs. That's totally fine with me. Just you really need to find out what you like. I find a range of 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds is a fairly reasonable sounding uh, reverb for an acoustic guitar. And let's see, I mean, there's a small guitar hall here. That's 1.7 seconds. And since this is a guitar track, let's try it out and see what happens. I'm going to increase that dry to max. And that reverb um, needs to be sitting fairly low so that we get that reverb effect, but we can't really notice it too much. So let's edit that right now. Alright, so I'm, I'm sitting at about negative 20 decibels on that reverb track, which sounds perfectly fine and natural to me. Alright, so let's get out of there. So we have this equalizer, we have this compressor, and we have this reverb on our guitar track. And now if you are one of those special people that record your acoustic with two guitar tracks, um, I would s suggest saying, you know, doing the exact same thing, the channel EQ compressor, um, and reverb on both of those tracks, but you can even do this little fun thing of changing up the reverb on one of your tracks to say, um, uh, I don't know, that one looks pretty crazy. Let's do, you can do anything. Um, I'm going to decrease it against negative 20 decibels, that seemed about right. And I'm going to, in this case, since I have only one track, I'm going to copy that down. So, say if you do have two uh, microphones that you were recording with and two audio tracks, you can take one, pan one to one side, let's say negative 40 on this, and we can pan the other one right, positive 40. Okay, so it has the same EQ on both, same compressor on both, different reverb, on each of them and then we pan them to opposite sides so let's hear what happens when we play this track um, even though it's the same track we can still get a very very nice full tone and it sounds very beautiful so let's give this a listen all right there you are everyone that's what I would do to record an acoustic guitar sounds very natural and the frequencies, the higher frequencies that we want to exploit are exploited, they sound beautiful and that's exactly what we are going for. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned a little bit. Have a great new year, I have a feeling it's going to be an incredible year and hope to see you around very, very soon. Peace out.